What's up guys? I am beyond excited about today's video because I'm going to be talking about multi-chromes. You know I have been talking about how much I love them, there aren't enough out there. Well, ask and you shall receive because we have an entire collection like shadows upon shadows of multi-chromes from Cleona Cosmetics. I feel like, and I know I've heard the same thing from a lot of other people out there too, that there is just this exhaustion. Like we've reached max capacity for new makeup launches. They're happening more frequently, faster, and they're all starting to blur together and we're losing that feeling of like that pitter patter in our heart when we see something that just makes our inner makeup lover jump for joy. So a couple weeks back, Cleona Cosmetics launched their stained glass collection. In this palette, it is everything in the rectangular pans. Down here, these are Luxie shadows, also amazing if you want to go watch a video on them. And I'm actually housing them in an Adept Cosmetics pan or like freeform pan. These are excellent. I have a couple of them and they're all phenomenal. But Back to Cleona. So when I saw these swatched, it was not one, not a few, not a handful of multi-chromes, but pans upon pans of multi-chrome, like enough to where I didn't feel like I could responsibly buy every shade to swatch for you here today. So I made my picks, they were delivered. They're like hand making and processing these and they just had this huge, like massive response to this launch. So it took a while for them to get here, but now that they're here, I want to do a swatch fest and then just kind of play with these at the end of it all. So first let's run through the shadows, the finishes, and then we'll get to playing. Real quick, just in case you're curious about the purchasing and shipping logistics. So Cleona is based in Canada, I'm in the US. I placed my order and you, I paid extra for tracked shipping. You don't have to have tracked shipping. I think you have to pay for both though. There isn't a free shipping threshold with them. So I paid for tracked shipping just because I didn't want it to get lost, especially in international shipping. And I was able to track it through the whole way, no problem. When my order, well, orders came because I placed one and then realized I, I needed a few more. When my order came, everything was incredibly wrapped. Like each one of these pans is in a normal like freeform pan or individual pan packaging. How beautiful is the back of this? this? Is this collection artwork? Each one of them is in one of these guys, which is then individually wrapped in bubble wrap to make sure none of these break in transit. And as you can see, none of mine did. And then they also packed your order. I'm keeping mine handy just so I can make sure I have the shades and the finishes that they're a part of handy. They also included a booklet on all the finishes in the multi chrome collection and how to best work with them, which I really appreciate because even though I bought all of these, like I knew what I was doing, I really had no idea what the difference was in between each of these finishes beyond the fact that they were separated by finish on the website. So I am so glad they included these and I'll be sure and walk through the details of all of them as I'm going through these collections. Now let's get into the swatches. So first I'm going to start with the jeweled multi-chromes, which are the bright, vibrant six pans you see up here at the top of my palette. Uh, the instructions here say they are finely milled ultra rich pigments that have a black base and intense color shifting reflex. They're packed with a high pigment concentration. So the end result is saturated saturated, a saturated vibrantly shifting shadow. And again, I cannot tell you how useful these are because I had no idea that these, you would never know from the pan, I don't think, unless you know how to make cosmetics, that these have black bases. But sure enough, when you swatch them, you shear them out and you blend them and maybe even over blend them on your eye, the intense color payoff is going to be diminished and you're really just going to see that blackened base. And I'd always wondered why that was the case in some multi-chromes that I'd come across, but just really appreciate that they explained it here as well as how you can use it wet versus dry if you over blend you're going to lose that colorful pigmentation like this thank you Cleona for including this so the shades that I have first starting with what might be my favorite because I love a good bold purple this is Spire it is a bold grapey purple that shifts into a vibrant primary blue and even has hints of like golden amber at some angles. I mean, realistically, I'll, I'll probably say two colors for all of these, but they are multi-chromatic. Then we have patina, which is a lime green that shifts into a forest green that then goes completely teal at some angles. And then there is anil, 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 I think think that's how you pronounce it. This has the most contrast. I mean, it goes from emerald green to a bold purple and then hints of teal in there somewhere. Really, really pretty. Then there is kiln, which is a bold berry at some angles that then shifts into this fiery bronzy golden 
orange almost. This one's hard to describe, so pretty. The website also probably does a much better job at describing the color shift here than I do. Then there is Gothic, which is a bold purple that shifts into a golden bronze with hints of green or antique gold in there too. And last up for the jeweled multi-chromes that I have anyway is Forge, which is a softer pinky berry that then shifts into a golden amber orange and then entirely differently into a green. Now I bought these in a pre-formed set of six that Cleona offers, but I believe, I wanna say there are 12 jeweled multi-chrome shades in total on the website. When I was looking at them though, it was kind of, it's so hard unless you see them in person to understand how they shift. Some of them looked very close to me to where I wouldn't need both shades, which is why I ended up going with that predetermined set of six. Next up in the row just below my dual multi-chromes are my iridescent multi-chromes, right? That's what they're called? Yes, my iridescent multi-chromes and I bought a custom four pack, which I think you could also do with the jeweled multi-chromes if you knew you wanted to buy a set of six, but didn't want their pre-formed set of six. You could pick your own, but I picked my own of the iridescents. These are described as these shadows appear muted in the pan, but have intense color shifting reflex. They really come to life applied to the skin, have a nearly transparent base, so they work great for all skin tones, and they're multi-purpose, so they can be used on the eyes, lips, face, and body, they work great as highlighters. So you're getting some multitaskers here and you know how I feel about those. So first up we have Candela, which is this frosty white base that then shifts pretty dramatically into a hot golden green and maybe hints of like soft turquoise blue at some angles. Then I have Reflectance, which is my favorite because again, comes in this very frosty looking white base, but when you apply it and it shifts, it is a combination of like soft blue, teal, iridescent pink, and iridescent soft lilac purple like it's there's four easily four maybe five colors in here so so multifaceted maybe you can see I'm hoping these swatches come off really well it's so hard to really capture all of the colors that are in these shades so I'm so hoping that these swatches are doing these justice next is the shade glare again looks very unassuming in the pan but then once you apply it has kind of a chunkier shimmer that shifts from a light blue to a light purple this texture is slightly different than the other three of these iridescent multichromes that I have it's just a little bit chunkier and so as a result I definitely see larger flex or larger reflex in here as opposed to the other which are very finely milled. And last up, if I can get this shade out without totally butchering the powder in the pan. Oh, I'm so worried about messing these up. I love the fact that these are in rectangular pans because it means you can fit them really tightly in a freeform palette, but when it comes to taking them back out of the pan, it's really hard to move them around. Um, so this is the shade Ambient, and it has a soft green tinge to the pan, but then when you swatch it, it's actually a very vibrant lime green that shifts into a strong gold shift at some angles and then at others it's like this pink situation oh that's so weird in the light it's that golden green and then once it's kind of in the shadows and against a different like tone of light it's there's some pink in there that's trippy so those are fantastic I think I'm gonna have a ton of fun with those alrighty now next step moving another row down to this one right here these are the glitter multi-chromes it says they are pressed plastic free mica based shadows um, same shelf life is the other shadows which is 24 months they have varying levels of opacity in the base color and varying glitter particle sizes making each shade versatile and unique and they are eye safe so of those shades I have this one that looks very baby pink in the pan it is called sunbeam but when you actually apply it, Sunbeam has this incredible oh my gosh this is like a unicorn shadow shade it goes from a pink base to a gold shift, but also has like a soft baby blue shift at some angles. That is so amazing. It's like seriously unicorn or My Little Pony vibes. Then next up is Spotlight, which looks hot pink in the pan and comes off a little bit more true to color when you actually swatch it to your arm. This is one where there's really just one primary shift that I can see, and it's like this blue purple shift to it with chunkier shimmer. The base shade is a little bit more sheer, and then it has chunkier shimmer over top. And then last up, I only got three of this particular finish, is the shade Ripple. This looks like a beautiful soft teal in the pan. Again, chunkier shimmer, but has a more opaque base than the last one we just swatched. And then at certain angles, this one has pretty pastel lilac 
like blue lilac ish shifts to it but I feel like I always see that teal base underneath it all which is not exactly the case pretty strong pastel lilac shifts to it but I feel like I always see that teal just under the surface of this one as opposed to totally shifting to another color like some of these others do okay last up the pastel multi-chromes I got the four pack which I believe are all the shades these are the ones that surprised me the most because I don't think the pans in person look anything like what they do online and I can show you I'm pretty sure what they have on my little order form here is the image they have online they look pastel but when you actually get them in person they're like a deepened version of that. So let me read the description because I think it explains why. It says these are a pastelized version of our jeweled multi-chromes. They have a soft sheer gray base with bright metallic colored reflex. They're also glitter free and great for those who might not want the full intensity of the jeweled multi-chromes. So again thought that was super interesting to know that these have a gray base over those down here with the black base and so interesting how that that base shade can so dramatically change the reflected color that you see. So the first shade that we'll talk about is Keystone. Now this looks like kind of a soft muted teal in the pan and then when you swatch it I definitely see that gray base now and at certain angles it shifts to a really purple or like a soft smoky lilac. Then there's Cathedral. Within the pan at some angles it looks like a soft grayy lilac here but the way I'm looking at it it's so funny it looks more like a green taupe at other angles and that's exactly how it comes off on the arm I feel like it swatches as a green taupe base and then that lilac shift really comes out at other angles next up is turret which is definitely more purple in the pan like clearly a smoky lavender sort of shade and then at other angles it shifts to more of a grayy pink taupe oh ooh, even some green in there at more extreme angles really pretty shift and last up is tower which it's so weird to see these in the viewfinder because in person, the way the light's hitting it here, it looks like an entirely different shade. It's showing as teal here in the blue finder, but the one I look at it like this, it's like purple. It's so bizarre. So at the base, when I swatch it, it looks like that teal shade and then at other angles, it's more of a bold, probably the most bold purple of all the other shadows I've swatched within the pastel multi-chrome collection. And then at even farther angles, it looks more like a true blue, like steel blue smoky shade. And we have made it all the way through these swatches without breaking a single shadow. Okay, now let's zoom in and have some playtime. Okay, so I'm sure you could have guessed what shadow I really wanna go for first. It is this guy right here, the bold blue that shifts into the bold purple. Now they say you can use these wet, dry, over a sticky base, but to really go full force with these, I am actually gonna use a mixing medium. I got the Esam Pro mixing medium, and I'm gonna take that on. This is actually the other end of a dual-ended Anastasia brush that came with a palette at some point in my makeup life. And I am just going to take, this mixing medium comes with a dropper, so I'm just gonna take a drop of that on a damp brush and I'm going with a brush like this because it's fluffy enough to buff out where I might want to buff out although they don't recommend buffing out too much so you don't lose that pigment intensity but it's also small enough to where I'm if it gives me hard pan I don't know if this is going to give me hard pan in these yet so I'm just I want a brush that's small enough to just take a little bit at a time to make sure I'm not ruining the whole pan if I ever do want to use these dry again so I'm just going to take this can you even see that right up here to create what's kind of a paste almost and then I'm going to go in and just start patting that oh <laughs> all over my lid. So for now, at least under this lighting that I have, it is really showing up as that bold, vibrant blue. I'll try and blend the edges here so you can kind of see how a shade like this blends out, like what it actually blends into if you were to blend and maybe over blend it. And also smudge that along my lower lash line. So here you can see what it's like. I'm still kind of working with a damp brush, but you can see what that blend out is like if you go a little bit too thin with the shade. That black base really starts to come out there. I'm actually going to take a little bit of this shade over here from Luxie just because it happens to be in my pan to help blend that out through the crease. And that, and then last I'm going in, patching that up just to make sure it goes all the way up to my crease. Okay, I probably should have laid, I don't love the way it's laying in my crease right now, the way I blend those two shades out, but I'm kind of chalking that up to user error just because I should have laid down my matte crease shade before going into all this. 
Okay, so ignore the bad crease blend, that's user error. That is such a pretty shade across the lid. I hope, hope it's coming off as faceted on camera as it looks in person. In the center of my lid, I'm gonna go in with that My Little Pony shade that's like teal, pink, blue. I'm just gonna pat that in the center of my lid. Oh, for a really fun turquoise shift. That's gorgeous. And then in my inner corner, I'll go in with the tiniest of detail brushes into the shade Candela and just pat. Oh, whew, very bright. Oh my gosh. If your inner corners are broken like mine are, this will fix them. I feel like we are reaching peak mermaid with this look and I'm not mad at it. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, I contemplated doing the same thing on the other eye, but I feel like we have to use some more shadows here. So. For my other eye, what I'm going to do is maybe play more with the golds and greens down here. Okay, the second I say gold and green, it now looks very on my viewfinder. <laughs> this is uh, this one over here. Now, same kind of deal where I just went in with my mixing medium and I'm going to apply that. Ooh, that is gorgeous. And this, I have a feeling it's, it might be because of the lighting or the angle that I'm, well, I guess it's kind of there. Oh, that is such a pretty shade. Um, it's it's almost looking like a soft berry plum that shifts gray, and it's not until you get at super extreme angles that you can really see like the golden bronze that comes out. And classic move, forgot to add my crease shade, so I'm hoping I don't make the same mistake I did on my other eye and really screw it up. This one's actually blending out, I feel like, a lot better in my crease alone as opposed to this purple over here which could also be due to the brush that i'm using this is a smashbox uh full coverage shadow brush so it's really nice for padding color on the lid but then it's also has a little bit more texture at the edge to really buff and blend that out now as my pop of center on this lid i don't even know that this goes together i've just been dying to use my uh, my little pony shade down here the one that has like the baby pink base and then shifts into all those wild colors i am once again just going to go with my finger and pat that on the center, which is now looking, oh, like golden. There's no pink coming through there, but it's so pretty. And it's kind of making that green come out a little bit more. That's really pretty. And last up for the inner corner over here, I'm using the shade that I actually used in the center of my lid on the other eye, which is still pretty teal when worn alone. Last up, what I wanna do is try and use one of these or a few of them as facial highlights like they suggested. Just to make sure I can get into these pans, I'm gonna go in with my Wet n Wild P75 brush and I'm gonna go in with the other iridescent multi-chrome we haven't used over here on the end. Kinda looks like it has a, nope, once again, looks green to me, looks pink on the viewfinder, um, but I'm gonna use that one just on the tops of my, <gasps> that's so, Gorgeous. And because we can. Okay, I'm just gonna go into, I think this was the Candela shade, just for a little bit of a, a really fun, icy situation right there, wow. Okay, so these are definitely blinding highlights when used on the face, you can count on that, but I love a good blinding highlight, so these are right up my alley. I also love colorful highlight just right there in that area of my face. So I think I'm gonna get a lot of good out of these in more ways than one. Um, we'll zoom you out because we are awfully close right now. That is it for me, guys. Thanks for hanging with me and playing with my new Cleona shadows. Let me know what you thought of these. Um, and if you enjoyed this kind of playtime slash swatch fest style video, I don't know. I just, when I got these in the mail, I instantly just felt the need to sit down and enjoy them with other people who would also enjoy them with me. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys!